Hi, Rust stations and other Rust curious persons. I started looking into Rust recently. I've been curious for a while. I wanted to come up with a project settled on a classic Asteroids game. It's an arcade game originally released in 1979. This screenshot shows the original vector-based graphics, but we'll be using sprites in the form of PNG images, as this is more useful moving forward. If there's interest in a vector-based solution, please leave a comment down below and I'll look at doing a video on that in the future. This video will assume that you have Rust installed and will not show you how to install the SDL libraries. However, there are instructions in the linked GitHub repository and this should help you get set up. I believe there are other tutorials that will show you how to install Rust. I will include a link to some of these in the show notes. The code can be found on GitHub linked in the notes as well. The first thing we need to do is, of course, navigate into our directory and run cargo init to initialize our Rust project. This will create our cargo.toml file and the main.rs file inside the source folder. We will need to initialize SDL2, the graphics library that we're going to be using. We will be using a separate dependency section for reasons that will become clear in future tutorials. To make sure the DLL and library files for the development version of SDL are installed, as per the instructions on the GitHub repository linked in the notes. We will also need the build.rs file described inside the readme. We'll cut ahead, assuming all of this has been done. We now need to reference the build.rs file we've copied inside our cargo.toml. This happens as part of the package declaration at the top of the file. Once we've done all of that, we want to open the main.rs file inside the source folder, and then we can start coding our actual project. The hello world code is already there, and we can check that this code works correctly by running cargo run. This will also make sure that all of our dependencies are ready to go before we start trying to reference them. And we can see that the code is built as expected and run. The next thing we need to do is import the SDL library components that we will need. We'll then clear the original body and change the main function to return a result object. This is a good idea to inform an operating system that the program has exited correctly, or more specifically, when it does not exit correctly. and we will then fulfill that contract by returning OK at the end. For debugging purposes, let's put in a print line statement at the beginning of the application. We then create the SDL context. Then we create the video subsystem, which gives access to the window controls presented by the operating system. And then we'll create a window now that we have the links to the SDL components set up. We have to give it a title and also a width and height. In this case, we will be making an 800 by 600 window. We have other properties to set, so we will create this window as position centered, then build it and finally expect the result not to fail. We now have a handle to the window. Next up, we need to create the event pump, sometimes known as a message pump and we do that by creating a while loop using a lifetime. In this case, we'll call it running. We then need to poll the event pump on every cycle of the loop and investigate every event that's been given to us, although as we will see, we will ignore most of them. Having taken our reference to each event returned by the iterable poll, we will then match the pattern of the event to handle those events. Event quit is the message that the user has clicked the cross or pressed Alt F4 and would like the window to close smoothly. It gives you a single opportunity to clean up and deal with shutting down gracefully before Windows will treat your application as non-responsive and likely force quit that application. We also want to filter for the key code escape so that we can close the window when hitting escape. It shows us a brief introduction of how we'll be handling keys being pressed in a future tutorial. And again, we'll just break from the running lifetime. Of course, being a match statement, we should provide a default. In this case, just want to do nothing. This is where the majority of events will go. So we save the file, run our application, and we can see that there are errors. The error was shown because we didn't return the value of the result, but the actual result object itself from a previous call to init. 
Simply adding a question mark on the end to return the value instead of checking the result will fix this error. We can now see our window display, and it should look like this. Not terribly exciting, but in the next tutorial, we will add some more interesting things in here. Lastly, we will add in a delay at the end of the loop in order to not just keep hammering away at the process and return some idle time back to the operating system, as well as helping to regulate the ticks within the game. Running again, we can see the same window displayed. We can also check the application quits when we press escape, which it does. So, this is our first SDL window. It's not terribly exciting, but this process will form the basis for the Asteroids game that we're putting together, and will lead to much more exciting things later on. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to post any comments or questions about this tutorial, and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can. Have a great day!